Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast. All the things we did not get to during the course of the show today, uh, including uh, uh, probably a possible rant about the problems with social media and uh, our society oh with the Chick-fil-A girl as the backdrop for that. Um, but before that, uh, I have to go through uh, an email from Eli, subject, hypothetical Hayden, and says, uh, hey, I think Betty and Hayden are actually in a relationship. Uh, what? <laughs> That's a great hypothetical. And if they end up getting married, you'll be her father-in-law what? and a big part of the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> right, whether I want it or not. Yeah, so I, are you dating Hayden? No. Are you sure? No, Hayden's times are even, not that tough ha- yet. Hayden's even too uh, light even for Hayden. you. Hayden, even Hayden. Sensitive for you? I don't know if he, I don't think he's ready. Yeah, he's not. He's not ready for you. <laughs> not ready to handle this. <laughs> I think you'd break him. Oh yeah, you've broken all of us. You've broken our souls. Thank you. Yeah, I know. You Thank take great you. Uh, pride in that, which is fantastic. Um, uh, the bridge collapse that happened in Maryland. Mm. We yes. watched it when it first happened, and it's, it's a very. I mean, it's a, a sad story because people have lost their lives. But GMA covered it for the better part of an hour, hour and a half. And they had no new information. They just kept saying the same thing over and over and over and over again. So I I went through and looked at the information today to see if anything had changed. And really not much had had changed. Uh, What they found out was that the local – we speculated on this yesterday. We weren't sure if it was – the pilot of the ship, because mm-hmm. in the waterways, if you go on a cruise ship, if you look down the side of your ship when you're leaving, you'll see a boat come up, and they'll, or when you're coming back in, a boat will come up. A guy will step off of that little boat onto the cruise ship, and he'll go up, and he brings the ship in. The, the captain does not. It's always the local pilot, they call them, that brings the ship in because they know the waterways better than anybody else there. Mm-hmm. That's what they're paid to do. Mm-hmm. And this was a local pilot, so he should have known the waterways mm-hmm. uh, and known where they were, and so... He hit the, the the bridge, but there were 20 vehicles that went in the water, and it's about 50 feet deep, and they, they have stopped making it a rescue, and now it's recovery, mm. and they fear that, like, six people passed away. They did get two people out, which was amazing. Oh, they that did? Is, yeah, they it's did. Wow. Impressive. Yeah, they saved two people out of the water because the water is, like, super cold, and the currents are bad, and so it just, if you had been in there that long, there was no way... Uh, that you were coming back. But sadly, it was like a bunch of workers, too, that were there fixing the bridge and actually doing potholes. Yeah, and it's just so random because if you lost a loved one, you'd be like, like for instance, How if you were just happen? driving your car across the yeah. bridge, you know, you, you just happen to be there at that very time, at, on that very wrong night. Wrong place, wrong time. Yeah, it's just crazy. It is one of those things, and it would be easy for you to start living your life in fear of everything. Oh, yeah. Because when something can snap that fast, you know, and, and you did nothing wrong. You mm-hmm. did absolutely yeah. nothing wrong. But, boy, if you let fear control you like that, you're headed for a life of misery. I will mm-hmm. say, though, I do think that I would... I would have a very hard time driving over bridges. Like, yeah. a, like if I lived close if to that li- scenario, yeah. like yeah. I, I couldn't imagine going over a bridge and not thinking about that. Yeah, I've watched one bridge that was collapsing, and it was a section bridge, and so one section went down lower. It hadn't fully fallen into the water, and you see this person driving, everyone trying to wave them off, and that person drives and just drops into the abyss and Ooh, hits the right. other side. But again, but you couldn't see that there was a gap there. You know, It looked like the bridge just went on. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm constantly reminded that my daughter, she'll get anxious about stuff like that and health stuff, and, and I've been, uh, you know, my whole life I've been like, you know, Boodle, you can't control any of that. You know, I call her Boodle. Uh, like, there's nothing you can do. And so to let that own you and live a life where you don't do anything is sadder than dying, you know, tragically, I think, honestly. A life where you just shut yourself in and don't do anything, I think it's far worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, even after tragedies and shootings and all these things, if, I think that's the, the problem. That's what terrorism is. Terrorism is designed to terrorize you and keep you from living a normal life and and that's how they win you know there was speculation there's one guy on uh on like uh tiktok that showed the ship he had footage of the ship coming in and like all these uh motion captures caught together and you see the ship come by and you're like boy it does look like it's aiming for it but they the officials have not said anything like that they uh said have the power said went out it appears to be accidental yeah, yeah. did they yeah. did they Isn't say it? the ship power yeah, went that's out that's what they said on the news okay the, that that was new then from what i had this morning when yeah. i saw like the video it looked like it was coming and then the lights went out 
and it was mm-hmm. floating, and then it looks like it came back on at one point. Okay, and then it floated, it went out and then it went out again. So they lost power on the ship, sure. and that's why it veered into the bridge. And when you lose power in a ship, a ship of that size, it takes a long time. I mean, it takes football fields of length to try and we had full power going in reverse to stop that motion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't have any power, you can't control it. I keep thinking about like who is responsible, f- like who's responsible for making sure that that ship has full power, right? The engineer, Who, right? And if he didn't do his job, well, then he's... or did something just break? But yeah, they, but I don't they know. have redundancy. That's the thing. They have redundancy on all these mm-hmm. ships. There's multiple redundancy on on planes. Multiple redundancy Emergency for when power. something breaks. Mm-hmm. There's something else to you know come mm-hmm. in and, and compensate for that. So just I mean yeah, just a tragic situation. I'm glad that you knew the thing about the. Um, the power, because I hadn't seen that yet. You know who I learned that from? TikTok? No, from GMA's travel expert, <laughs> Gio? Gio Benitez. Well, finally, he had something to say. I feel bad <laughs> for like the uh, anchors on these things. Like, so they they'll do like a five minute story on it with the with the hosts, and then they'll toss it out to the local person and be like, "So what are you learning there?" And they're like, "Look, dude, you just said everything. Mm-hmm. I have nothing new. I'm standing here, and the only reason I'm here is because like you can have a different video shot, and I have nothing else to add to this. But then they have to. Well, as you mentioned earlier, it was a bridge, and bridges typically <laughs> stay with me here. Uh, take people from one side of a lake or a river or a body of water to the other oh. side. This happens on a daily uh, uh-huh. occasion, and from time to time, uh, you will have things that slow down that process. Oh. In this case, with the bridge missing. You can see that people will probably not be able to get across oh, said waterway. Uh-huh. Back to you, George. You know, Ooh. yeah, it's so. But I that, feel bad help, for that. That really, you know, gave me some insight. Thank you, sir. I've had to stall before at concerts. Like when I was hosting a concert, I was doing this all day. I don't like to do uh, festival shows anymore. Um, and so I would be hosting, and I'd talk in between each of the bands while they did the the change out for the bands. And it always takes longer than you think. And I remember the um, stage manager going, all right, we're good. Uh, you go, you talk for like two minutes or so, and we'll be ready to go. So I, there was a little bit of confusion. I'm like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah. And one other guy's like, I don't think so. And then he goes like, no, 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 we'll be good. Go. I'm like, all right. So I go out there. And I finish what I'm going to say. I'm ready to toss it back to them. And I look back, and they're still doing everything. And I look back at him, and he's like, gives me the sign to stall. I'm like, to stretch. I'm like, son of a gun. So I start stretching, and then I start making fun of people in the crowd. And (laughs) and that's what I always do. I always always turn on the audience. If if I'm stuck where I'm uncomfortable, (laughs) I turn on someone in the crowd. And so then I'm, I'm doing this. And then people just start throwing things uh, because I guess they got bored too. So they start throwing like beach balls at me and oh stuff. My gosh. And so then I start chucking stuff back that at them. Sounds horrible. It's turning into chaos. And I look back, the guy's still going, stretch. I'm like, what did the. I, I, I probably did another 10 minutes out mm. there stretching. Mm-mm. And so I feel for anybody put in that situation. Uh, all right, so here is what we uh, wanted to get to today. Oh, the Chick-fil-A sauce girl. No, that wasn't it. Oh. That was just a little smorgasbord, a light okay. snack. Uh, this is what I've been wanting to talk about. Granted you. No, no, no. The Chick-fil-A sauce girl. Okay, this girl went viral <laughs> uh, because her sister came in and was videotaping her, and uh, she's working at Chick-fil-A counter, and this is kind of what they shot. A lemonade, all right. And then can I also have barbecue sauce? Or do you have like a buffalo sauce? No Chick-fil-A sauce? No Chick-fil-A sauce. And then you want Chick-fil-A sauce? And then what makes it funny is she's bugging out her eyes. No Chick-fil-A sauce? You know, and so that's Mm -hmm. it. I mean, that literally is it. It's a nothing video, Mm -hmm. but it went viral because she made such a funny face with it. Mm -hmm. And her and her sister, I guess it's been a thing that they do that funny face and they goof around. So that's it. You think it ends there. You went viral. Fantastic. Oh, no, not Gina. Not Gina the Chick-fil-A girl. Mm. Gina the Chick-fil-A girl then goes on to uh, post a video of where her life has gone now. Hi, guys. It's me, Gina, from the viral Chick-fil-A video. So this is going to be a serious video today, and I'm already not starting off strong. So... As y'all know, I'm a new creator. Are you? I'm having a little bit of creator's block, if that makes sense. You've never created anything other than this. I just would like to know what kind of videos y'all are looking for. I'm a big artist. I like art. I could do art. I could do singing. I could do parodies because I I could do anything that y'all are looking for. Because 
I'm doing Turn this for y'all because no, I love all ourselves. of you and thank you for all the support. I we really appreciate it. It's yeah. for us. She's doing this for us. It. But Rock, she's doing it for you. No, she's not. Yes, she, she cares. cares. No, she's not. She's doing it Why for herself. You like think? That? No, I think she's doing and it for she us. And she really talk. Yeah. There's no way. Like, um, no, she's just putting on the up, whole persona. And this is what I feel bad. is like you had one weird viral hit. And great. Good on you. If you made a little bit of money on it, great. But now there's that pressure for her. She's like, okay, now I've got 80 million followers or whatever. Now you got to monetize that. And so now she's doing all these videos that aren't funny, aren't interesting. She has no idea what she's... She wasn't designed to be a... That wasn't mm -hmm. what she was going to be as a creator. But now she feels like because she had one hit, oh, I'm a creator creator now. Mm -hmm. And when you have to ask people, what do you want? You are not a creator. Mm -hmm. A creator is creating things mm -hmm. that just in their essence are compelling to people to watch. And so you weren't ready for this. I, I haven't looked at the comments yet, but I have to believe the comments are not kind. Nope. Like the internet is, is a brutal place. Oof. And so I cannot believe that it is. I, I feel bad for this girl in the sense that she jumped into this pool and I don't think it's going to be healthy for her. No, not at all. And, and I, I, oh, darling, you are not a creator, you know, <laughs> and, and I don't think you want to be like, just go back and work at Chick-fil-A and then go to college and do something. Yeah, but everybody, it, all kids want to be creators. Well, it's, you know, it's like, tough because. Not, not everybody get you know people work super super hard and their 10 you know their hundredth or thousandth video is the one that goes right viral and yeah. they, then they've made it and they've earned their way there so like it's hard to get your launch it's hard to find the launch pad to success and she you know randomly stumbled on it with this video yeah, I know. and i i get where yeah like if, if you can turn it into success but it doesn't seem like she's got you know, guidance from people to say, hey, that's not good. Yeah, like, let's not do that. This the merry-go-round of content creation is is a crazy ride for people, and I don't think people fully understand what it takes and to, to stay, because people are so fickle. You're in one second, you're out the next, mm -hmm. and so all you're doing, it's like a junkie. You're chasing that next high. Yeah. You really are, because you, when you hit that, that level and like, this is amazing, you want to get it again, mm -hmm. and you want to have the next thing go viral, mm -hmm. the next thing, and, and, and really one out of a hundred might go viral, you know? And so even if you've had success before, I remember when uh, we went to see the Newsies in New York, so Broadway play, and this is, these guys that were in this are the best of the best. So Newsies closes, and out of Newsies closing, we followed like these guys because my daughter was super into them, and like three guys got jobs out of this, you know, and the rest of the cast is still struggling like everybody else. Like it does, you're not guaranteed, once you've had success once, you're not guaranteed to continue mm -hmm. to have success, but like when I was on vacation, I told Betty, I said, I'll do more posts while I'm gone this time. I wanted to try out this camera that I'd got, and, and it was fun, you know. But I was posting a lot of stuff. And, like, in between, I would shoot stuff, and we'd be out traveling at one location. Then we'd get on a bus and drive to another location. And while we're driving, my head is in my phone editing mm -hmm. uh, these videos and trying to stay up with this and planning when I'm going to post them and then posting some then and holding this. And I still have stuff I didn't post. Like, I got consumed on the bus with doing this. Now, I enjoy it, but my wife was like, you're missing stuff. I'm like, I know, but I got to get this done. I felt this pressure because I felt Betty Rock in my head oh my gosh. going, you need <laughs> to it, work more on vacation. It wasn't me. And That's even what I feel if like. You, even if it wasn't me, you would find something else to blame it on for yeah. sure. I had Betty in there like in her head, in my head, just going, man, this is all you're going to do today? You're only going to do five videos? Okay, whatever. You want to do that? Wow. Yeah, so. Thank you. Thanks You're for welcome. ruining my vacation. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, what do you got, Rock? I have a story to tell you. This is about a couple who, they're both influencers. We're oh, just nice. getting on with the influencers. So, a couple, they are expecting their second or third child, and they decide to throw a gender reveal party. So, they're spending $9,000 on a gender reveal party. That's that is insane. insane. Put that in a college fund for your kid. Yes. And like, just watch it grow over the next yeah. you know, 20 years. You won't have to worry about college. Yeah, it's insane. Well, anyways, so the mother-in-law, so the mother of the dad. The groom dad, or the dad, yeah. Yeah, of the dad of this kid that's about to be born. She calls her daughter-in-law, the one who's about to have the baby, and she says, hey, I want to come and help you plan this gender reveal. Well, the daughter-in-law says, oh, I appreciate your offer, but I'm actually planning this party with my mom and my sister. But if you would like, you can show up the day of and help us set it all up and get mm -hmm. it ready and prepared. She 
says back to her daughter-in-law, what am I, your maid? Mm. Yeah, because you can, you're can. you good enough to come help set things up, but not plan. You Right. Got so it. I guess she felt left out. The sure. mother-in-law felt left out. Well, of course, when she says this rude remark, it hurt the daughter-in-law's feelings. She goes to her husband, a.k.a. the mother-in-law's son, and she's like, you'll never believe what your mother said to me. She's like being very rude. So he goes to his mom and he's like, how dare you talk to okay. my wife like that? Can I say something here? Mm -hmm. Good on him. Because mm -hmm. like it, too many times in relationships, the 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 spouse will not confront their parent in mm -hmm. these, and it drives a wedge in their marriage. Yes, you get married, you are marrying your wife, and your first responsibility is to her now. Mm -hmm. And if something has bothered her or hurt her, you need to man up or will man up, and you need to <laughs> take their side if they're in the right. You know, I, right. That, you don't just blindly follow them either. But if there's a, a, a if there's a um, situation where you've got to choose sides, you need to choose your spouse's side. Right, for sure. So good on him. So, and you might be thinking, well, she only said, what am I your maid? I, I cleaned that conversation up. Yeah, she said yeah. a lot more than just that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so the, the son says to his mom, you can't talk to my wife like that because you're being so rude. You are not invited to this party, this Ooh, gender reveal party. That's a big step it's from him. It's a big him. step. So... She, now the mother-in-law is like, oops, I went too far. I'm going to try and backtrack, and I'm going to try and get back into their good graces. She's trying everything she can, but, I mean, she built, she, she burned, burned a bridge. bridge. Yeah. And so, finally, the day of the party that morning, the mom-to-be says, you know what, to, says to her husband, you know what, uh, invite your mom. It's fine. Like, I'll just bury the hatchet. Let's just go on a, with a it. Good, a good olive branch from yeah. her. So he calls his mom and he's like, hey, you know, we changed our mind. You're invited to come. You know, you can show up at this time when the party starts. Well, the party, everybody's starting to come. They're waiting. They don't want to start things until the grandma of this baby yeah. is going to get there, obviously. Well, she's late and she does not show up. So they're like, okay, we've postponed this long enough. We're just going to go ahead and reveal the gender. So they do the countdown. They're counting down. When they get to second 13, so they're going 15, 14, 13. When they hit 13, all of a sudden the lights go out and sprinklers go off everywhere in, in the... Inside? Yeah, inside in the facility <laughs> where they're having this huge party. <laughs> Sprinklers go off. Some a fire alarm is That's going off. So okay? great! Wow. So everybody runs out of this auditorium, and the couple gets out as well. Everything is ruined because everything is wet now. They get outside and they see the mother-in-law. She is sitting outside smoking a cigarette. Oh my gosh! And immediately they think she did. She this. pulled it. She, she pulled, pulled it. The fire alarm. She pulled it. So they go. Up that to is next level. So, if she did yeah, that. So the the son goes up to his mother and he's like, "Did you just pull the fire alarm to ruin our party?" She's like, "No, oh, no, I would never do that." Smoking a cigarette. Right. But I did blow smoke into the uh, the uh, right thing. Yeah. Right. So, anyways, he goes on social media to ask people, "What do you think? Do you think my mom did this yeah. on purpose, or was this just accidental?" But she never admitted to it. She never said, yes, I did pull the fire alarm. She did. But it sounds like she is so calculated yeah. that she she would do it. Wow, because that destroys a lot of stuff, too. Like that, $9,000 that, worth of stuff. Yeah, that messes up the building because then the building has to reset everything. And then it destroys things in the building, yes. too. Oh, my goodness. That's next level. If she did that, she might not have done it, but she, I guarantee you she's not sad about it. <laughs> no. What I would do is I would pay whatever money I needed to to get the security camera footage. Oh, absolutely. If I could find proof, oh, I want to know. Yeah, that's where, yeah, you got to... Um, You'd have to draw some lines with your mom at that point if Boundaries. you're the if you're the if you're the husband. At that point, she's so toxic. You don't even want her in your kid's life. It is interesting, yeah, for sure. It is interesting, like blending families and things like that. Like I always had a really good relationship with my in laws, and as does my wife with my family. And so I'm beyond thankful for that. Like that was that made our lives so much easier. And then, like as I look forward to. Um, my daughter possibly uh, getting engaged and married with the guy that she's uh, dating, Spencer, if that happens, then it's like, okay, we're blending these two families. And now, like, our families get along really good, which is great. I love that. Uh, For we're, now. I know. We're, we're different in a <laughs> lot of areas, but we still, we get along really well. Mm -hmm. But I could see, like, you talk about the planning of something. I think that's always a real 
difficult thing to try to balance everybody's emotions in that because sometimes especially a wedding or a or a baby reveal you're thinking oh well this is the mom's thing you know Mm -hmm. the 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 wife the you know the mother to be and so you're like whatever she wants but then you have to remember the groom's family or the uh, the husband's family Mm -hmm. has goals they've had for their kid as well and so like as i think about this like it's easy to go, oh, well, what does Haley want? What would Haley want? Mm-hmm. But then you have to also go, well, what, what would his family want? Mm-hmm. You know, and then how do you blend those two things into something that everybody is happy with? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, I think the best thing to do for both families is to to sit down with the kids, especially in the case of a wedding, and go, okay, you guys tell us what you want. You tell because that's the overriding thing. Whatever you guys want to do is what we'll all agree to and do. So we're not each putting our own spin into it and pulling it in a different direction you where know, they're Haley, scared. She'll be like, I don't know, just whatever everybody. She's else wants I know, to and do. she's I tried some know. of that. And my wife was like, What how do you not know? Like I dreamed of this from the time <laughs> I was like eight, you know? And yeah. so yeah, so I think Haley's starting to get a little bit more um verbal about things but really? still not a lot no yeah. not a lot <laughs> just a little bit so it'll be interesting if this goes that way for her I, i'm not so interested happens. about that part as i am the money situation because that is so, i i just want you to be prepared listen i i try to be a kind person okay mm-hmm. but i i i have to give you a hard time on yes. that i have to i know it's just built in well here's the thing here but talking about but daddy i, I want the three thousand dollar shoes i don't think she'll be like that honestly like i know i'm gonna i know we'll pay more for a dress than i think is worth it but and i understand but not a ton more um okay. yeah but man's got a cap yeah the thing is with tough guy with the like again we're talking about the other families getting another mortgage it's, yeah well like i'm i'm notoriously cheap and i don't want to spend a lot of money on this of course you don't but then there is vacation dad is there, vacation dad's pretty awesome is there wedding dad there will not be wedding dad. is there no. wedding dad we don't know does no. he exist does no. he not Man, i think he does i will say because i went to a wedding last year and i know from somebody asking and me hearing because i don't you know i'm not gonna go ask someone how much their wedding sure costs. But hearing somebody ask, and then hearing the the number fifty five thousand, no, 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 pop out, no, and I'll tell you this, no, it was a great day. It and doesn't it was, matter. It was all super gorgeous, super pretty. No day is I, worth fifty five thousand dollars in your life. But daddy, it's my one and only it, day. Don't my care. Wedding day, daddy, she, you don't understand. She, this girl was the the princess of this family. No, nope. and so she was very important. Like Haley. And her dad was the kind of dad, just based on what I was told, the dad was the kind of guy who. Gave her everything, like gave her the oh. world. They're gonna be. Very I don't give involved. her everything. Like okay. they live. Like she's still like. Oh, I still like want to like. We should live like next door to my parents. Like they have this fantastic yeah. relationship. Oh. But I will say this: oh. that those two people that got married, oh. they are the oh. same amount of married as me and my wife. Absolutely. Are, and cool. our number was a try good and tell that. To, try and tell that to your daughter. Here's the thing. And here's she's no. Not let gonna, me tell you the thing. Don't yeah, you tell, me, ahead, the tell me the I'm thing. I'm going to tell you the thing. The thing is, is not only are you. I think Haley, you might be right. She might be like, oh, whatever you want to do, Daddy. But then she's going to play the game because she knows how to play the game. She's had twenty something years of experience of playing the game. The thing is, your wife. Your wife has yeah. an expectation of what that day is going to look like. She also she also is the neck. While you might be the head, she is the neck. And she also knows how much y'all put into that savings account for her wedding. Yep. And that's what's that there. Uh, I don't know that he number. He doesn't want to know. I don't know that number. It's, it's more than I wanted it to be. <laughs> um, but where she's been saving for that diligently, I have told her. I've told Marty, I've said, that's fine. You can use all of that. I, that's great. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> but, like, I don't want to add more to it, honestly. You don't want to. I don't want to, no. But, but wedding dad might have to. See, this is the thing. My, <laughs> Here, what is the well, thing? Well, talking about, like, the other family, <laughs> I don't want to be, like, I have my own thing of, like, I think that's crazy to spend a bunch of money on this, this, and this. Yeah. But, like, then, you, have, like I said, you have to take into consideration, like, say, Spencer's family. Like, they've had expectations for what the wedding would be mm-hmm. like for their and this son. this would be their first one. And I'm paying for it you know so i have mm-hmm. to balance that out Ooh. the good news is is uh spencer's dad mitch is notoriously cheap and i love it like and spencer's notoriously cheap and i love it so i'm hoping that they can understand like if i don't want to spend a grip of cash on this that they are like, they're like down it, with it and no then you'll look bad th- no that they're just down with it like yeah let's do something on the cheap but you daddy know? i need a three-tier cake well i can afford only a one tier yeah, one tier but then 
Spencer's dad Publix. is going to be like, you know what? You're my daughter, too. I'll pay for those other two uh, There's a good chance at this point I would be like, that's so nice of you. <laughs> like, years ago, I probably would have been like, no, I'll get it. I'll, I keep up with the Joneses. <laughs> no. Now, hey, if you want to cover that, I don't great. believe you one bit. I, I don't. I would I don't. Rather, you, you talk about $55,000. I would I would much rather, like, let's say that my wife does not have that much in the uh, wedding account. You don't know. I know it's way less than that. I know it's way less than that. You hope it's way less than that. Darn sure better be. Um, but it's like, I know it's less than that. Okay. okay, sure. So, but that, but that number, okay, that big number, I would much rather like do a eight thousand dollar wedding mm-hmm. and then go. Here's the rest of that money. You have it for a house down 100%, payment. Hundred percent. That is something that will pay off wait, big for you. Uh, wait a minute. You what? are contradicting yourself Why? because you just said earlier you want to sit down with the couple and you want to say whatever you want to do, whatever right. you want to do. And now you're saying this is what oh. they need oh. to do. Yeah, I because I have my own opinions and I would guide them to They're, that. Oh, yeah, I would. You, of course you would well, because you don't want to spend the money. Well, like Haley. Well, no, I want to give her money that matters. I don't want to I don't want to spend a bunch of money on fish and chicken and steak <laughs> that just feeds people and then who cares? I love, I love steak. None of that matters. No None of that matters. Of course. According to you. It doesn't. According well, to you. Well, that was the fascinating thing is that Netflix had a show a while back and it took place here in Nashville. Yeah. And it was the show where they said, hey, we have, you know, $30,000. Marriage or mortgage. And you get to, yeah, you get to choose the perfect wedding or you yeah. get to choose the money as a down yeah. payment on a home. And that's where you went wrong. Yeah. Because you watched Say, you, sir, say Yes to the Dress you and all say that. Yes yeah. to the Four dress. Weddings. And you didn't watch whatever this yeah. show is well, that people, Gavin's talking about. That's what you should have made her watch. And people still chose, like a handful of them yeah. still chose the wedding over mm-hmm. well, because some people care about that yep. day. Make no mistake. Okay. My daughter is in uh-huh. her best friend uh, Lily's wedding oh, coming up. Yes. And Lily's wedding is going to be beautiful. Like I, we were talking <laughs> with Molly and Greg, like her wedding is going to be to the nines and it's going to be very nice. And it's, and I know it's very expensive mm-hmm. uh, because Greg and I were talking about stuff. And so like, trust me, Every turn during that wedding, I'll just be looking at Haley and going, you know you're not getting this, right? You know you're not getting this, right? You don't need to say that. I know so I do mean. need to, I do need to tell her that. No, you know we're not doing this, right? Because you know that she she doesn't want to hurt you and so she's not going to really speak up. Yeah. And you were just saying you're going to sit down and you're going to tell her it's whatever you want, whatever you want, little baby. Within reason. My little boogie boo. Within reason. But then you're over there going, you ain't getting that. I would, I again, I would much rather give her something of value, and that's a down payment for a house. Like I think that is going to serve you far more than having a certain thing of roses on your centerpieces versus a cactus. You know, hypothetical, and we've got four minutes. Hypothetical situation. Haley says, "Yes, Daddy, you're so right. Mm -hmm. I don't want to spend that. I want a cheap wedding. Yes, but I want to give half of what I what I save from a cheap wedding. Right." to my brother Hayden right. to help him not be homeless living in okay. a homeless shelter right. with his hermit crab right. Hermie. If if Hayden uh, is at the wedding, <laughs> then I will say yes, but what she doesn't know is I had Hayden kidnapped. <laughs> so <laughs> you had to pay someone to kidnap yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the lengths I will go to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, do you have any birthdays? And they're like, they're like, they're like, sir. Do you want to put out like a, a <laughs> APB? A, no, a yeah. missing persons or, report, or, or put out a reward? No, no, not really. No, <laughs> he can figure it out. Yeah, he'll be fine. Uh, we don't have any birthdays. Okay, all right. That's gonna have to do it for our <laughs> aftercast today. And as always, thanks for being a potty. Growing up in poverty has never been easy for children, but with the added challenges of the pandemic, conflict, and natural disasters, families around the world are facing an unprecedented food crisis. Unfortunately, those who are already hungry are now even more desperate. But by sponsoring a child through compassion, you can help provide life-sustaining essentials such as food and clean water. And with your compassionate support, that child can not only survive, but also flourish. You can find out how and choose a child to sponsor when you click on the compassion banner at wayfm.com.